Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. Mary Shelton, the mysterious mistress of Henry VIII. One of England's most notorious kings was Henry VIII. The infamous Tudor monarch is mostly known for his six wives, and the fact his relationships caused great turbulence across the country. Henry ordered the execution of two of his own wives, and it's been estimated that around 70,000 people were executed throughout his kingdom. But Henry also had a number of mistresses, and was known for possibly having illegitimate children. One of these was Henry Fitzroy, the king's illegitimate son, whom Henry showered in titles and gifts. It was even considered that Henry Fitzroy was even possibly considered to have been Henry VIII's successor when he died, and plans were being drawn up to possibly marry the young boy to strengthen his claim to the throne. However, one of Henry's alleged mistresses is shrouded in mystery. It's debated by historians whether Mary Shelton, or her sister, Madge Shelton, was the mistress to King Henry VIII, but Mary was a prominent and very interesting Tudor figure. Both Mary and Margaret were the daughters of Sir John Shelton and his wife Anne, who was the sister of Thomas Boleyn, the first Earl of Wiltshire. Mary was born in 1510 and was born into a high-profile family, and they would greatly benefit during the Tudor period, especially throughout the reign of Henry. Thomas Boleyn was the father of Anne Boleyn, who became Henry's second wife and through this marriage the family benefited with grants of land and much finances. This made Mary the first cousin of the Queen, linking her to the royal family. It's assumed Mary had a prominent and successful education, also benefiting her status. As a child, she wrote many little poems inside her prayer book, and two of her closest friends were Lady Margaret Douglas, the niece of Henry VIII, and Mary Howard, the Duchess of Richmond the wife of the king's illegitimate son, Henry Fitzroy. She was a skilled writer and is considered to have been the main editor and contributor to the Devonshire Manuscript. This was a piece of work compiled by Mary Shelton, Mary Howard and Margaret Douglas that contains a number of original pieces of poetry, transcriptions and writings. It's considered an anthology of courtship, inspired by the court culture at the time whilst Anne Boleyn was queen. Anne surrounded herself with young, intelligent and witty courtiers, where scholarship gossip and flirtation was encouraged and expected, and within this environment the Devonshire manuscript emerged. It's been described as the richest surviving record of early Tudor poetry and the literary activities of the 16th century woman, and it shows us what Renaissance women were like in court close to power. It's believed that the manuscripts also feature work from people such as Thomas Howard and Henry Stuart Lord Darnley, who wrote to impress Mary Queen of Scots. The majority of the poems are linked to Thomas Wyatt, but the women did feature prominently in compiling the work. In particular, Mary Shelton's handwriting has been linked to a number of the folios inside of the manuscript, and she is noted for writing an unsentimental, plain speaking tone. She came to court during the marriage of Henry and Anne Boleyn, and it was during this time in which it's believed that one of the Shelton sisters, either Margaret or Mary, became the mistress to the king. It was common at the time for the king to have mistresses, but more recent research has pointed that it was in fact Mary Shelton who had an intimate relationship with the king whilst he was married to Anne Boleyn, her cousin. This today is considered to have been incredibly scandalous and would probably have rocked court and caused Anne Boleyn a significant degree of hurt. We know of Anne Boleyn that she became offended greatly when Henry sought to take Jane Seymour as his mistress, and when the king was caught with Jane sitting on his knee, Anne's furiousness allegedly brought on her miscarriage, but she would possibly have had to live with the fact that Henry did have mistresses. The confusion regarding Henry's possible relations with either Marge or Margaret Shelton and Mary Shelton resolves around the label Marge Shelton in contemporary 16th century accounts the Y resembles a G at the time, which was a common confusion, 
and today it's believed that it was in fact Mary who was intimate with the king. Mary herself was one of Anne Boleyn's ladies-in-waiting, and it was common for these women to be prominent players at court, and often these women would catch the eye of high profile and key courtiers. It was ultimately the king's decision if a member of court could marry another member of court. Because at the time, permission had to be sought from the monarchy. It was said that, although Mary Shelton and Anne Boleyn were cousins, this did not mean that their families were allies and were close, as not all Boleyns even supported Queen Anne. Anne was deeply in love with Henry, and as mentioned, it is common knowledge that any female who caught the attention of the king was looked upon by Anne with rage and jealousy. She had made the king wait for so long during her courtship with Henry, but now she was established as the queen, she acted like any wife would, raging about any attention her husband got from other women. Mary, it's assumed, was a talented player of courtly love, due to her contributions to the Devonshire manuscript, and along with her friends, she must have caught the attention of a number of men. She was described as being a young girl of great beauty and talent, and her friends were influential on her. Mary, it's considered, could also have been writing love poetry in the manuscript to the king, and pitted against the young and skilled Mary Shelton. It's likely Anne Boleyn may have felt threatened. There were a number of rumours that linked Mary to the king at court, and it was talked about in hushed tones that they engaged in sexual relations. Because it's not certain about Mary's date of birth, it's possible when she began her affair with the king, she could have easily been as young as 15, which would have been incredibly scandalous. It's known that the affair is believed to have been a short one, lasting around six months, but Mary was comfortable with her position at court. She was not interested in grand gifts from the king, and she didn't ask for money or land during this time, like she could have. What is even more strange is that in the Lyle letters, there is a part which states a rumour about that Madge, or possibly more likely Mary Shelton, being debated to have become the king's wife in 1538, which could have put her as Henry VIII's fourth wife following the death of Jane Seymour. This would have been possible, as it would have almost mirrored the way in which Jane and the king got together and eventually married. After Anne's fall from grace and subsequent other marriages, Mary became engaged to Thomas Clear, a poet in seemingly a good match. But shortly after their engagement he died, and Mary inherited his land and wealth, benefiting from this brief engagement. She then later went on to marry her cousin, Sir Anthony Heveningham, and she had five children with him. She then also married again in 1558 to Philip Appleyard, but passed away sometime around the end of 1570, aged around 60. She is buried in Heveningham Church in Suffolk, and was interred there on the 8th of January 1571. Mary Shelton lived a very interesting life, and if the rumours are to be believed, then she could have been one of King Henry VIII's wives. She was related to Queen Anne Boleyn, and served her as one of her ladies, but interestingly, she could have possibly usurped her as the Queen of England if history would have been different, and if she did actually have the affair with the King. After Henry's death, she seemingly fell from grace slightly, but did marry prominent men at the time in society. She was close with other Tudor women at court, but today is considered a forgotten member of the court of Henry VIII. Thank you for watching and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.